Welcome back. So today I'm working on uh, trying to get Flick Chess compiling using the latest Lee Chess source code. It sounds easy, right? I mean, all I have to do is reapply the Lee Chess source code. Uh, I'm sorry, reapply the Flick Chess changes on top of the Lee Chess source code, and the rest should just work by itself. Um, I don't think it's going to be that easy. In fact, I have already started, and I can tell it's going to be a fight to just get this working. Because um, a lot's changing in Lee Chess. They're always changing things, they're always making it better, and uh, it's always a race to keep up. Um, so I'm in the middle of a git rebase, and I figured this is starting to get complicated enough that... Um, I don't know, there's something worth showing instead of it just being formatting issues because they reformatted their code base uh, to make it uh, amenable to standard formatting tools and scripts. So, um, what I've got to do is just keep issuing SBT compile. Um, until I can succeed in making all the code changes that address all the bugs. Um, and uh, once it compiles, then we get to see if I uh, did the merge correctly. Um, I'm sorry, the rebase correctly. Uh, some things have changed. For example, uh, move times are now being represented in a more compact format that offers greater precision but this is still moment so at least I think it is um, in any event um, my own code base is kind of complicated and leech us uh, the Leela code and other uh, repositories that we draw from are also complicated um, and yeah you're right that um, we were looking a minute ago and seeing that MongoDB was consuming tons of virtual memory, which seems very wrong, but my system is not um, suffering yet because of it. I do want to look into that, but I also want to stream and get through this coding merging stuff, um, this code merging. Let's try that again. I want to get through merging this code, or rather this code merge, and verify that I'm able to get Flick Chess up and running um, and deal with the mundane details of system administrivia. How do you pronounce that? Administrivia. That's right, I think. But I do want to bother with that, but just not during the stream because um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'd have to look up lots of reference documentation to figure out what the heck is going on with MongoDB. Um, uh, I remember how to pronounce it. Administrivia. There we go. Anyway. Yeah, flick chess. Um, so the basic premise is you set up the pieces on a chessboard and then you're able to uh, line up your finger behind a piece and kick it forward. And if it collides into an opposing piece the first opposing piece it collides into is removed from the board. Oh, hey, look, that compiled. That surprises me. Um, uh, let's see, let's add modules game, modules round, modules setup, and modules socket, get status, get diff, cached showing everything I'm fixing. It's just a whole bunch of code formatting uh, and parameter change issues. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we inserting new lines for no reason? I probably am. Um, yeah, let me take a look at this and just see what's going on there. View game proxy dot scala. Line 12. Is that it? That can't be it. Invalidating. Okay. Well, I guess 
I guess there used to not be a blank line there or the there were spaces added or something. Um, but yeah, code is being formatted in a more standard manner. It's being re uh, auto formatted uh, at time of compilation. Um, so let's see. Get status. Get diff showing local changes. I think that's okay. I have a sub module which I think I'm correctly. Um, including importing whatever the term is for that. I've already brought that up to date. Uh, git commit, so fix um, code fix function parameters and code format um, code format Issues raised during rebase. Uh, code format. I want to fit this in under 80 characters. Uh, formatting issues raised during rebase. Uh, that's close enough. Okay. Git branch dash v. Git push. Uh, wait, git remote dash v, yeah, git push origin and holbert, and push that. So, yeah, I finished the rebase successfully. Git status. Um, uh, so, yeah. I already completed the rebase, but after the rebase, I went to build the modules and encountered a cluster of errors, and I'm surprised it all works. Um, so let's look now at what I intend to run next, which is this statement to reimport the submodules, build the dependent submodules, build the project, build the user interface, and build the icons that go into the public assets directory. I've got all kinds of other things commented out there too. Um, so let me do sh build. That'll take anywhere between two or 10 minutes, I think. Maybe it's finished in one before, but I doubt it. Um, but if that statement executes and successfully, it completes successfully, then um, I can start up my instance and we can actually play this variant that I'm talking about. I was thinking this is going to take an hour or two um, to get all the code merged and rebased and everything back up to date, but um, apparently, yeah, when I plan for things to go quickly, they take forever, and when I plan for them to take a long time, uh, they're over. That surprises me. I mean, I know um, this sort of prediction is challenging because there's just an enormous amount of code and I'm still learning how to deal with such large projects um, and make better predictions as to how long things take, but um, yeah. So yeah, we'll see momentarily, apparently, just how close I got. I was looking forward to, like, just running the project, and then we could see from the web browser um, all the compile errors that are, uh, that can occur during runtime when the code attempts to recompile to deliver a web page. Um, if that makes any sense. This is all Scala-based, so it detects if files have changed or if dependencies um, or even the source code itself is having errors. It'll it, um, articulate to the end user exactly where the error occurred. Um, so. Um,
said, let me clean up a couple things and hope this will finish up in a minute. And um, yeah, we'll get this started. Okay. Yeah, again, sorry for the delay. I thought I would just be issuing the compile command over and over, which generally takes about a minute to each issuance, and then um, gives me an error message that causes me to think a lot. So, usually, <laughs> in, it's I don't even know that I call this test-driven development, but it's more like error-driven development, where... I'm just taking all the code, trying to bring it up to the latest, greatest version, and fixing each error as I come across it. Um, uh, and then once that's over, then we start doing the test-driven development where we see uh, what aspects of um, another person's code work as they said they would, and what aspects still need some improvement. Um, for example, um, this is a really complicated example, unfortunately. Uh, this variant flick chess um, has some issues that were discovered during previous testing. Uh, like if you drag a piece and it's not your turn, you can kind of like pre-move drag the piece and express um, um, well, I actually I don't know if that's true, but I forget if you can move if it's not your turn or not. But as soon as it's your turn, um, as soon as your opponent releases their piece, it's immediately your turn, and you're able to drag a piece and start moving it right away, even if it's already moving. Uh, even if it's about to be removed from the board, in fact. So it's necessary to set up some server-side validation, articulating where all the pieces should be located on the board, and then have some sort of mechanism for synchronizing the client state with the server state, and then allow all the spectators to see the flick moves occur too. Um, again, that's a really complicated example. You can break that down into smaller parts, um, like a player dragging a piece uh, and then flicking it and then reloading the page and seeing that all their pieces are back. Um, so that can create confusion, I'm sure. I wonder what happens if you lose a piece and then you reload the page and you move the piece anyway. I wonder if that causes your opponent um, to think that you didn't move, in which case uh, their clock is ticking and there's nothing they can do about it. I don't know, there's all kinds of possible exploits and I haven't uh, delved into all of those, but 
Um, at least for a good, honest game between two honest players, the, the variant's kind of fun. Um, so, I know each time that this compiles, I talk about, look at all these modules that are compiling, and how the language is very modular and extensible, and uh, so on and so forth. And this is using Play Framework, I think 2.4. Um, so there's a play framework allows you to define like views and actors and various other things where an actor can act on some sort of playing space, um, uh, which can be displayed in all kinds of various ways. Um, it just defines kind of a cookbook of um, pieces you can amalgamate together to construct a game. Uh, so that's what Leechess has built atop. It's using the play framework to handle event processing and notification and so forth. Uh, so that you don't have to write your own application that keeps track of all the sockets that are open and... Ooh. Oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, the UI did not build. The reason the UI did not build is because I need to make a change here. This says use bin slash sh. My system needs to use bin slash bash instead. Um, so let me issue this part of the command again. This last part. Go. All right. And Unfortunately, the chat covers the progress window or progress bar at the bottom. Um, so you have to trust me that things are progressing. Uh, at least until you can see uh, messages scrolling on the screen, mostly of the warning and error varieties. Almost, all, almost entirely warnings, though. I've not seen errors here in a long time. So we're just building the UI. In hindsight, I should have done this in a separate shell. Um, or run this in the background so that I'd be able to start up the server a little bit sooner and then wait for the UI to construct whenever we're ready to construct it. No matter, because um, this will be done fairly soon. So once all the UI has been built and all the assets are put in the correct places, um, like here we see all the source images and then we're building um, public facing images that are used say on dialogues to ask you do you want to play white or black or do you not care which color you get, or random is uh, the term they use. Uh, players do care but random is the arrangement that players agree upon. Um, so, we're waiting for all those images to compile. Once those are compiled, I can then um, start up the server. All right, we're ready to go. SBT, and then dash V to show the version number, and then I'm going to type RUN to start up the server. And while that's going, um, a separate tab, I'm going to attempt to display the page. Um, <laughs> I forgot. Um, my instance still says leechus.org. I should probably change that at some point to say my server name. Uh, do I have a command for that? Yes, there it is. There's the URL. That's the server I'm trying to fire up. So, we'll see if this um, does start up. It should. It really should. And so far, so good. Now, as for whether I can actually play the ver- ooh, That doesn't look good. 
Um, let's try reset WebSocket. Okay. Yeah, something's still foobar there. Um, let me log in in a separate window. Not that this matters. And drop that in um, over here. There we go. Yes, I'm encountering network errors. This is something I've seen a while ago. Um, I should probably open another sh Oh, hey, look, we got our tournaments listed. Um, yeah, I'm actually curious what my error message is. Error name not resolved. Um, oh, okay. Um, so let me go open a second shell, and we're going to attempt to fix this. Um, the error message I'm seeing is that it's trying to connect to a server by the name of socket.moo.com, and I know that that server, uh, that name does not exist on my network. That's a non-existent name there. Let's switch over, clear, uh, go over here, Leela, uh, what are we looking at here, socket is, oh right, um, where was the socket handler, no the internationalization handler is where there's an internationalized socket handler which had to be adapted. Um, uh, we have the English language, um, and apparently, like I got this advice from other Lee Chess developers, not going to name names here, um, but I was told just comment out the body of this method, and I'll make this just return none, and um, your web page will work just fine. Okay, great, um, but what am I supposed to do? So, yeah, I know my, um, my server configuration only defines the language EN. So for purposes of getting this up and running and demo going, I'm going to revert this here and then reload. And you can see in real time um, that changed code is getting deployed and, or compiled and deployed. Um, so I'm not sure what the deal is, why... Um, if I comment out the body of this method, things stop working. Um, I'm, that's what I'm advised to do. Now I'm going to change that back momentarily. Uh, and I think he, after I change that back, I think things do work as expected. But I'm confused as to why I have to even do this step in the first place. Um, So, uh, yeah, once this is deployed and my connection is established, okay, and I'm not getting a reconnect error, which is good. I don't want a reconnect error. Um, then I'm going to try saving that again, refresh again, um, and see now if the code's back to the state in which we were last demoing and testing with. Um, are we up good in uh, that state? Or do I have to leave the code um, uncommented and just recognize that it's only going to work for people in the US? 
that's the trade-off I've got here. No, it seems like, well, at least it works for me. Um, oh, no, no, I lost my connection. Oh, got probably confused by my use of Vim, which creates, yeah, I should have used View rather than Vim. That creates some other files which confuse um, the simple build tool environment. Um, and that's my fault. So, what I wanted to do, let's see, let's turn some sounds on. Sounds are good. What I want to do is like try to create a game. We can make a flick chess game. Um, the problem is, okay, so we're able to see this icon for flick chess. Um, Note that you cannot play flick chess with the machine, but oh, in fact, I don't have um, my, I, my AI up and running, so it wouldn't make sense to play against the AI machine anyway. Um, but yeah, it should be possible for, both for anonymous and for registered users to be able to play this variant. And I'm just struggling to think of how to test that. Um, okay, since I, oh, you cannot access the URL. Um, okay. Uh, down for everyone or down for just me. Is this URL down for everyone or is it down for just me? It's not just you. Looks down from here. Oh, it just keeps loading forever. Um, well, let me try. Let me try this. Um, okay, I'm gonna refresh um, and see, like, if I turn on the internationalization. Um, see how things go. So this is compiling and deploying again. Uh, we'll see if it gets compiled and deployed. Oh. Cool. So it's redeploying stuff. And now if I go back over here, I can like view a profile page and so on and so forth. Uh, we see three players. But right now it's just me really. Okay. It's like I can put a seek out there for some good old flick chess. I could even make a flick chess tournament. Um but I have no idea, like I'm trying to figure out how to test this. I'd need to have um, myself in here anonymously, I would imagine. Since nobody else apparently can log in at the moment, I don't know. Yeah, so server is not loading. Okay. Um. Uh. Well, what is my IP? Uh, so here's the address we're dealing with, 6560187100. Um, let me know what IP you find for me. I didn't intend for there to be geo information there, but what are you going to do? <laughs> um, I guess anybody could figure that out now that I think about it. So is it just that the um, DNS is wrong or is it that um, the something, like what kind of HTTP code are we talking about? Um, let me see if I can find notepad plus plus and go to my host file. Uh, I guess comment out 
stuff in my host file. See if stuff still works after that. Seems to be a DNS problem. Okay. Um, that at least helps narrow it down. Um, okay. So let me see. Let me see how I can. I need to go over to my DNS settings and see if they're up to date. I've got dynamic DNS, it should all be working. But things do tend to go bump in the night, I suppose. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, go back to my dynamic DNS page. Oh, yeah, my dynamic DNS is down and my router didn't fix it. Well, that's annoying. Uh, let me go fix that. Edit record. Um, uh, so, what is my IP? Let's go fix this. Type in the special code. Save the security code was incorrect. Let's try that again. Different image. Okay, security code. Save. Security code is still incorrect. Am I just blind or something? Let's try that security code. Okay. Oh man. Have I got to update all of these? Jeez. Okay, I thought they were all linked to each other. Apparently not. It doesn't like my security codes. Save. Okay. Let me go back. There's a mass mod utility. Um, mass change these to my new IP address. Mass changes have been completed. Don't know how long that's going to take to propagate. Um, so, um, Oh, you're going to start working on S chess. Or some, or wait, that sounds like a question. Or no, that sounds like you're notifying another member in the chat that you're going to start working on S chess. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the challenges for S chess um, is just the lack of images for like the 2D and 3D sets of all the various types. So, unless that can be tackled, I don't think Lee Chess is ready to accept S Chess. Plus, they claim it's pretty similar to Crazy House. Oh, on his side. Okay, cool. Nice. That'd be fun to play some. Um, so yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take you guys to receive the updated DNS. It might take an hour, it might take 24 hours, it might take a week, I can't really tell. Or it might just work right out of the box. Um, wouldn't that be nice? So, let me see if I can find a notepad of some sort. Uh, here somewhere. <laughs> I can make a study. Nope. Uh, I don't feel like doing a whole study just for a block of text. Import game. All right, there is the IP address that you would expect to find if you're going to resolve that um, name there. If you get this address, then you're trying to connect to the correct service uh, or server. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is all, yeah, it's 
all freely hosted dynamic DNS, so um, I'm still really confused as to why it didn't automatically update. My router does log in and automatically update the dynamic DNS whenever my ISP changes stuff, but um, you know? Okay. Gives you relay chess at that IP address. Um, that's interesting. I do have a relay chess server up and running on the same server. Um, okay. How familiar are you guys <laughs> with um, Nginx? Um, Maybe we can work through this, guys. Maybe we can get this. So, here I've got, if you're connecting on port 80, for the root path, it's redirecting to the proxy server on port 9663. Uh, I'm sorry, it's doing a reverse proxy translation. Um, I actually forget what port number, um, port number does, yeah, so Relay Chess is running on 8080, but if you're connecting to 80, that should redirect you to the, uh, Lee Chess instance on 9663. Um... Uh, so, <sighs> I'm confused. Do I have, how do I check if I've got multiple programs that are trying to, um, listen on port 80? Because, uh, RelayChess should be attempting to listen on port 8080, not port 80. Also, you'd have to just, like, re uh, connect with the name RelayChess.com or one of these names here. But otherwise Nginx shouldn't get you there. Um, so, okay, here's a thought. I can use links localhost um, oh yeah that's definitely Apache on port um, uh, 80. I thought I had that configured for 8080. Uh, what the heck? What have I done wrong here? Um, PS grab Apache sudo service.apache stop no service apache stop no that's not it there's something special you have to do to start and stop apache uh, never mind it's apache 2 um, okay so now if I try to do connect to port 80 I still get this like how is it that I get that? Um, sudo service relay chess. Stop. Okay. Now if I try to connect on port 80, I still get this. I am so confused. Have I done something dumb? This should be, um, yeah, this should be trying to connect to the Leeches instance. Um, 
Well, let's first check out the status of the various processes that we're running. Uh, service Apache to status. It says it's loaded, but inactive. Service real HS status. Uh, loaded and inactive. Um, I mean, unless I've incorrectly identified my IP address, that seems unlikely. Um, how is it that when I connect to my local machine, I'm getting that page? Um, I mean, I guess I could look at the log file and see, I mean, we've got this error log and access log. The access log could be interesting, but um, sudo service engine x restart. Maybe it's caching something it shouldn't be caching. Okay, and now if I try to connect to localhost, I still get this. Refresh linking to, but this has got to be hooking up to Apache or Tomcat or something. Pseudo service Tomcat stop. Apache Tomcat. No, it's just Apache 2. Um, there's no separate Apache Tomcat service. Um, tail this log file? How is it that I'm getting a service? How, what is it that's on port 80? Is that, do I do like nmap or was it something nmap mmap netstat something uh, I shouldn't need to do this for my own machine um, Linux um, processes port number there's got to be some way to figure that. Okay, here we are. sudo netstat nlp grep80. So yeah, it's just nginx. But nginx shouldn't be... well... I mean, what's in the nginx file? It must be offering up that file, because otherwise... Um, hmm. Maybe it depends what server name I'm trying to connect on. Yeah, let's try, um, let's try, what is it, links. Host name. Um, accept invalid cookie domain, whatever. Okay. Yeah, so I connected to Leechess. I can't connect to localhost to do that. I have to connect to um, um, to the. Oh, uh, what was it? The one ending in moo.com. Yeah, I have to use uh, this URL here. And then everything works just fine. Let me restart or start back up my services. So Apache 2 can be running. Apache 2 is no problem. Relay chess is no problem. As long as I connect using the fully or the correct host name, yeah, I get this leech us stuff. 
which is good. Um, so let's go um, public. Where's the 404 page or the grab leech us? Um, somewhere in here, there's the leech us is down page. I would prefer to um, at least change this one. Leechess.org uh, to my server name. Uh, that's it. So if my server does end up going down, we'll get the correct static content. But yeah, I think I'm connected. And in theory, it should be possible to connect to my IP address. And if you're coming in with the correct host name, everything should resolve just fine. The reverse proxy server should be able to handle based on what name you're coming in with, which server to direct you to. Um, that said, at some point, I don't know, I could decommission the Relay Chess server on my instance because that's not the production Relay Chess server anyway. Um, but I've not seen a need to do that. Um, I'll have to look at what's going on in my router settings. Maybe something really unusual is going on there. Um, so. Oh, a router <laughs> router firmware upgrade is available. Well, guys, is anybody attached to doing testing right now? Oh, shoot. Never mind. It's... Oh, right now I can download that. Fix the security issue about password recovery. I suppose that's worth downloading. This might be the end of the stream if the router craps out. We'll see. Sure. Downloading and updating the language table. Man, this is the ultimate instance of we'll do it live. Um, here, let me see if I can at least... Here we are. Oh, the router's updating its firmware. Um, yeah, I think we're done. <laughs>